What is up, you guys? Welcome into the debut episode of The Road to March, presented by the Women's Hoops Network. I am your host, Hamilton Neal. This is a brand new podcast all about women's college basketball. Right now, we got the tournament going on. First two rounds are complete. Sweet 16 is set. That's what this first episode is going to be about. We're going to cover the rest of the season. Then moving forward into the offseason, we're going to find everything we can. If you're returning, if you've seen our YouTube channel, thank you for coming back. Glad to have you yet again. If you're new here, glad to have you as well and welcome aboard. Great time to start following this channel, following this podcast, everything that we're doing, because we just had the rebrand from Hoop Central and For the W to the Women's Hoops Network. New name, new image, everything is new and fresh. So if you're new here, you're seeing a lot of great stuff right now. And again, we're glad to have you. This NCAA Women's Tournament, it's different than others in years past because we are no longer working on a four-host format for the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. All of the regionals are now in two cities. This year, it's Greenville and Seattle. So on the top half of the bracket, it's Greenville 1 and Greenville 2, left side and right side. Then on the bottom half of the bracket, it's Seattle 3 and Seattle 4. So the way we're going to be reading this and breaking this down is going on the top half from left to right, Greenville 1 to Greenville 2. And then on the bottom half of the bracket, we're going to be moving from right to left, Seattle 3 to Seattle 4. Again, starting with the Greenville 1 section of this bracket. Top of the bracket, left-hand side. South Carolina and UCLA and Notre Dame and Maryland are going to be playing in Sweet 16 games. South Carolina is the number one overall seed. UCLA is the number four seed. Notre Dame and Maryland are number three and number two, respectively, here. So top four seeds made it to this point. South Carolina, UCLA, going to be an intriguing matchup. UCLA is definitely a dangerous team, but South Carolina is undefeated. They're the number one overall seed. They're the best team in the country. Cleared Norfolk State in the first round, 72-40. Beat South Florida in the second round, 76-45. South Florida, the number eight seed. So, SC dominant to this point, as we expected. UCLA, first round, beat Sacramento State, the 13th seed, 67-45. And then in the second round, Won a close game against Oklahoma. Very good 4-5 matchup there, 82-73. What I like about UCLA is their backcourt talent. Kiki Rice, tremendous freshman, has had a tremendous season this year. Charisma Osborne, steady point guard, going to be a WNBA draft pick, likely a first-round pick in this year's WNBA draft. So in the backcourt, I think they pose some problems for South Carolina, but the difference in this game is going to come down to the bigs. South Carolina has Aaliyah Boston, Leticia Meher, Victoria Saxon, Camilla Cardoso. That's the difference. Four legit big players. UCLA doesn't have that type of talent on the interior. The backcourt has carried them to this point. South Carolina, they have it in the front court and in the backcourt. They have Bree Bill on the wing. They have Zia Cook. They have Raven Johnson. So they have that complete basketball team. And that will propel them to the Elite Eight. South Carolina, I think, will definitely win that game. Not by a ton, probably by 12, 15 points, something like that. UCLA is going to be in the game. They're going to compete. But they have been so talented in the backcourt for so long, and they've lacked in the front court for so long. When they get to this point, around the Sweet 16, they run into better teams with more players especially more on the interior. So I like South Carolina there, and I like Maryland in that game against Notre Dame. Reason being, Notre Dame, they're without Olivia Miles and Dara Mabry. Both of those players out with knee injuries. So your two best guards are out and have been out this entire tournament. Neither have played. Maryland, dominant win against Holy Cross first round. Second round game against Arizona. Seven seed, dicey at times. They showed great resolve in that game. Really came through well. Diamond Miller, uber athletic wing, probably going to be the number two pick in the WNBA draft. They have Abby Myers. Princeton transfer has been outstanding all year. They have so many other players as well. In the Greenville 2 section, the top half of the bracket on the right side, we have Miami and Villanova playing. Nine seed Miami, four seed Villanova. And we have LSU and Utah playing. Number three seed and the number two seed. 
All of these Sweet 16 games, by the way, March 24th and 25th. So South Carolina, UCLA, Maryland, Notre Dame, those are on the 25th. These two games here, Miami, Villanova, LSU, Utah, on the 24th. Looking at the Miami and Villanova game, interesting matchup because Miami beat Oklahoma State in the first round, 62-61. Those eight, nine games, they're always dicey. They're always close, but they came through. And then they beat Indiana in the second round, 70-68. to Indiana, the other number one seed in the top half of the bracket, shocking upset. Villanova beat Cleveland State in the first round, number 13 seed, beat them handily. And then they beat Florida Gulf Coast in the second round, a number 12 seed who would beat Washington State in the first round. Reason I like Villanova in this game is because they have Matty Segrist. Miami doesn't. Segrist is a 6'2 forward, extremely versatile, can score from all three levels. She will pose so many problems for Miami in this game. She's a player that can go off for 30, 35 points. She had a 50-point game this year. That's not happening every single night because they have other good players, but she has the potential to go off at any moment. Miami, they have a collection of good players, but they don't have that dominant player like a Matty Segrist. LSU and Utah, LSU again the three seed, Utah the two seed, Uh, similar kind of thing to that Villanova-Miami matchup. LSU has a dominant front court player in Angel Reese at the forward spot. Utah, they have Elisa Pili, they have some good players. But that one dominant prospect, that one dominant force, I think will put LSU over the top, and that's Angel Reese. Double-double machine all season long. Has had some incredible games in this tournament already. Utah doesn't have a player that can match up. So I like LSU in that game. Going to the bottom half of the bracket now in the Seattle 3 section, right side. One seed Virginia Tech, they're going to take on four seed Tennessee. And number three seed Ohio State, they're going to take on UConn, the number two seed. Both of those games... On the 25th, Virginia Tech, number one seed here in this region, beat Chattanooga in the first round, 58-33, beat South Dakota State in the second round, 72-60. Taking on a Tennessee team who seems to always have a great start to the season, then they struggle a little bit, now they are actually surging. Beat St. Louis in the first round, blew them out, and blew out Toledo in the second round. Toledo was an upset team, beat Iowa State in the first round. Iowa State, very good number five seed, but they weren't ready for that instant offense that Toledo was providing. Just wasn't the same against Tennessee. The defense was stellar. The offense was outstanding. This is the one game where Tennessee matches up well. They don't have Tamari Key, great interior post player, but they have Rikia Jackson, versatile wing. They have Jordan Horston, who's a big guard. I think they're going to outdo Virginia Tech in the backcourt and on the wing. It's going to come down to can they neutralize and can they stop Elizabeth Kitley? Great post player for Virginia Tech. 6'6", great size. WNBA draft pick coming up in April. If they can do that, if they can stop her, if they can shut her down, Tennessee could win that game. I actually do like them to get the upset. In the Ohio State-UConn game, another intriguing matchup because Ohio State is starting to surge again. They beat JMU in the first round after trailing early in that contest, 80-66. to Then they beat North Carolina, 6 seed in the second round, 71-69. Taking on a UConn team who blew past Vermont in the first game, 95-52. And then they beat Baylor in their second round game, 77-58. to The bigs of UConn are playing extremely well right now. Dorky Uhas and Aliyah Edwards. The backcourt is looking good. Nika Mule, AZ Fudd is back. Had 22 against Baylor. She's getting back into form. UConn has numbers again. That's the important thing here. Everybody that can play for UConn right now is playing. That's important. They finally have somewhat of a rotation to go into. Ohio State, their backcourt is great. Taylor Mikesell, Taylor Theory, JC Sheldon. You know, you go down the line. Great backcourt pieces. But much like UCLA, not as much post-finesse. The rebounding advantage will go to UConn in this game. Fudd, I think, will be outstanding. Nika Meal has been tremendous all season long. Defensive player of the year in the Big East again. Assisting like Matt on offense. 
I just see UConn having too much momentum. Last but not least, the Seattle 4 section. This is a lot to talk about in itself. Number one seed Stanford went down to eight seed Ole Miss in the second round. 54-49 win for the Rebels. Shocking win. Shocking for an Ole Miss team that coming into the game really didn't have any matchup advantage. Stanford has Haley Jones on the wing, Hannah Jump, two guard, can knock down the three. They have Brink on the interior. They had no matchup advantage. But when a team plays with passion and when they play hard, and when everybody comes together, that's when great things can happen. This is a good Ole Miss team. They have good personnel. No superstar, but a good basketball team. When that collective can come together and become greater than the sum of its parts, you can win in March. And Ole Miss did that in the game against Stanford. Impressive win. Most impressive win of this tournament so far. They're going to take on Louisville. Louisville is a team heading into the tournament that I, as an analyst... I wasn't down on them, but I wasn't ultra confident in them. There are some things about this team that had me a little bit worried. Number one was the lack of post finesse and the lack of rebounding. So the post overall, big issue. Rebounding has been a problem for them. And just the overall brute force on the interior. They have some decent post players, but they haven't consistently rebounded and they haven't consistently impose their will. So the two main problems for Louisville, again, were post-finesse and post-rebounding. Beat Drake in the first round, 83-81, tricky 5-12 game. And then in the second round, they took on Texas, another iffy team, a number four seed, 73-51, blew them out. Haley Van Lith was outstanding. She was the best player on the court in that game. And it was just a matter of Louisville having her and Texas not. So we got Ole Miss and Louisville on the 24th, also on the 24th, Colorado and Iowa. Iowa, number two seed, we expect them to be here. Caitlin Clark, outstanding so far through this tournament. They beat Southeastern Louisiana in the first round, and then they beat Georgia in the second round. Eight-point win, 74-66. Cleared that tough, tricky matchup. Facing a Colorado team who beat Middle Tennessee in the first round, 82-60, and beat Duke. In overtime, in the second round, 61-53. Had Duke been here against Iowa, I would have worried about the defense of Duke locking up the offense of Iowa. Colorado is a decent team on both sides. They're not amazing offensively, and they're not amazing defensively. But they have some good players. Jaquia Miller, outstanding for this team. 17-14 and 14 in this game. Played 43 minutes out of 45. Arnett Vonley, Arizona transfer, 12 points, 6 rebounds in this game. Those are the players in the front court that are money for Colorado, and they have some decent backcourt players. Jalen Sherrod, 14 in that game against Duke. This can be an upset, but Colorado has to score. That's the bottom line. They have to score the basketball because Iowa is going to at least get to 75 points. Colorado has to get to at least 75 as well to have a chance in the fourth quarter. I think in the end, Caitlin Clark will be a little bit too much. I think Iowa's going to win the game. But overall, Colorado could pull that upset if everything goes right. And uh, again, in the Ole Miss-Louisville game, I like Louisville to come out on top. Van Lith, I think, will be outstanding again. So I think that sets up Iowa and Louisville and Tennessee and UConn. And from that point, you know, anything can happen. I'm not going to make predictions uh, further than the Elite Eight matchups yet because we're going to have another episode coming up to preview the Elite Eight and to preview the Final Four once we get there. So you'll have to wait a little bit longer for those predictions. But uh, at this point, we have some great Sweet 16 games. Again, all of those games March 24th and March 25th. That is going to wrap up the first episode of The Road to March. 
I've had a lot of fun breaking down these matchups, talking about the Women's College Basketball Tournament. On our next episode, again, we're going to be talking about the Elite Eight, all these matchups, any other news coming in with Women's College Basketball. Until then, this is Hamilton Neal signing off. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you next time.